there was a story of a man who went and decided he wanted to buy a yacht, and his wife was very nervous about it and questioned him because the man had never sailed before on the sea, and he didn't know anything about boats, but he was determined to go and buy it. And so telling his wife that it'll be fine, that he he knows what he's doing, he went out and he purchased it, and he wanted his wife to go with him, but being apprehensive since she had never seen him sail before, he realized he needed to practice sailing first. So he spent several weeks sailing around the harbor preparing for uh, his wife to come aboard with him so they could set out to sea and have a wonderful time. And so he goes to the harbor with his wife. And he's talking her in to getting on the yacht with him. And he says, honey, don't worry. I have been practicing and practicing and practicing around this harbor. Everything is fine. Come on in. And so the wife hesitantly steps onto the yacht and they cast off. And his wife is still nervous as they're going down. And he says, honey, look, I have got this. I've been out here so much. I know where every single rock, every single reef, and every single sandbar is. And right about that time, you hear this huge crunch as they hit a rock underneath the water that's hidden. He says, look, honey, see, there's one right now, as he grins. You know, discernment is something that we ought to use. It's something that we ought to be able to better um navigate the the seas of our life it's something that allows us to get around the rocks and the reefs that we face today if we're not discerning we go and do things that we're not prepared to do where we know little to nothing about without help for it we make Bad decisions such as buying a yacht when we've never been on a boat before and taking loved ones with us when we don't truly know what is around or how you are to skirt the issues. We try to hide our lack of wisdom, but God is not fooled and neither are others. Charles Swindle said, Wisdom is the ability to see with discernment, to view God as God perceives it. Understanding is the skill to respond with insight, and knowledge is the rare trait of learning with perception, discovering, and growing. This morning, we're continuing our study through the benefits of the study of Scripture and why we're called to study Scripture. And we're going to talk about this morning that Scripture gives us discernment as we live out our lives, and that we can utilize Scripture to gain discernment. One of the best texts on the study of Scripture is Acts chapter 17. If you'll turn there with me, starting in verse 10, after Paul is sent from Thessalonica overnight, it says in verse 10, the brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night from Thessalonica to uh, Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now, if you followed Paul throughout Acts, Paul regularly goes to the synagogues to proclaim Christ. He regularly worships there, but he also regularly speaks of Christ at these places. And when he was there, in verse 11, says, Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They were more noble than those. For they received the word with all eagerness, examining the Scriptures daily to see if the things were so. Many of them therefore believed with not a few Greek women of high standing as well as men. But the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was proclaimed by Paul at Berea also. They came there too, agitating and stirring up the crowds. Then the brothers immediately once again sent Paul off on his way to the sea, but Silas and Timothy remained there. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him as soon as possible, they departed. Here we see these Jews that that are searching for God, that are worshiping God, that are in the synagogues. And Paul comes and Paul proclaims Christ to them. And they do multiple things here to discern whether Paul is speaking the truth to them or not. And whenever we see them studying, we see them looking, we see them responding, it's amazing because it's said that they are more noble than the Thessalonians. 
As if to say the Thessalonians just accepted it, but the Jewish people in Berea wanted to make sure it was truth. There's two different ways to look at this text when it comes to discernment. Not only the ability to gain discernment, we'll get into that, but the ability to look at the text, to compare the text with other things, to make sure what we're hearing, to discern whether what we're hearing is accurate. On the picture on the wall, you'll see a road with multiple forks in it. And the point of that is discernment is simply the choosing which is the right direction and which is the wrong direction. But we need the help of God to choose. We need God's wisdom, God's discernment. To seek God's discernment, there's three things we can learn from the Bereans. First, we need to eagerly receive His Word. We need to eagerly receive His Word. Whenever Paul began preaching and teaching about Christ, they were eager to hear it. When when we are searching the Scriptures, when we're sitting and listening to a lesson, when we're in a Bible class, what is our attitude? Are we eager to hear? Are we sitting there going, oh, here goes another lesson by Josh? Are we eager to hear the Word? Are we eager to get to lunch, church? When we're in our personal Bible study, are we eager to hear and receive the Word of God? Are we eager to check it off the list so we can move on to the next thing that we want to do? How do we approach personal study, Bible class, Sundays, etc.? Is it with reluctance or with eagerness? Scripture gives us the ability to discern between that which is good and that which is bad. That which is the correct path and that which is the incorrect path. It gives us the discernment between paths and plans and all these other things in life. But we must eagerly search and receive the discernment offered through Scripture. You see, so many people today think if I feel this way, it must be God telling me this is the right way. Their only source of discernment is their emotions. And last time I checked, emotions lie. Feelings lie. Right? The Word of God does not. You see, discernment based solely upon our emotions and our feelings and our ideas It's not discernment at all. It's not wisdom. It's not of God. It's of us. We need to be people of the Word. We need to be people who discern the will of God eagerly by receiving His Word. What does it mean to receive the Word with eagerness? It means looking forward to searching out the Scriptures. It means asking questions. It means contemplating and thinking about it, talking about it with other people. It means dusting off the Bible and getting into it. And that brings me to the next point, the next thing the Bereans did. They examined the Word daily. They examined it regularly. If we want to discern the will of God, if we want to go into Scripture and receive what the wisdom it gives us so that we can navigate life. We need to regularly examine the Word. This was actually the topic in the families class this morning, where we were talking about the idea of prioritizing things. And one of the things that talked about, and we talked about in class was prioritizing the study of the Word of God, that devotional time. You see, we make plans for everything else in our lives, but how do we do it planning to spend time in the Word of God so that we can discern if all of those things we're doing in life is actually worth it? Because, there, guys, busyness does not mean we're actually doing anything. Right? In this church... Our leaders don't just sit and come up with emotions and feelings and directions and visions. What we do is we look in our Bibles and we need to be in those Bibles as teachers as well and deacons as well and all that. And we need to discern, are we going in the right direction? 
busyness is not godliness, guys. There are people who are so busy in life doing good things that they leave out the things they should be doing because they think it feels good, they think it's the right thing, but they haven't opened the Word of God to discern whether it's actually what God calls us to do and participate in. Are we regularly examining the Word? Do we make a habit of doing this on a daily basis? Life gets busy, doesn't it? You, you want to know why it gets so... And we talked about this on Wednesday night, just slightly. You want to know why it gets so busy that we can't open the Word of God? It's because we're not planning our life. We're letting everything and everyone else plan our life for us. We were talking in class about how sometimes it's a struggle to prioritize coming to church on Wednesdays and Sunday nights and all this other stuff, and how we have kids and we have all these other things going on, and I'm not faulting you in this class, it's just the conversation that the video brought up that we were talking about, and, and how it's so hard because of the busyness, and I, I finally I said, you know, I don't have that luxury with my kids to get too busy to come to Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. And my kid, my oldest, is involved in sports and is involved in music and is involved in school now and other things. Most of us in here, if you grew up going to church, a lot of us had parents that didn't give us the luxury of choosing whether we come and spend time in church. But what about do we have that priority not just with church but with our Bible and being in the Word of God? People can't think today. And I believe one of the reasons even Christians cannot think is because they don't spend time in the Word of God on a regular basis. And by think, I mean they, they can't seem to process right from wrong. They can't seem to realize that just because I feel it's okay and just because I think God wants me to be happy, they can't seem to understand that God never says that. Well, you know, I know God's... God doesn't really want me to live with someone I'm not married to, but God just wants me to be happy. Or people say, well, you know, it's not that God wants me happy, but we'll be married eventually. Or I'm dating this person that's not a Christian, and I know Scripture warns against that, but I'll, I'll, I'll do some missionary dating and convert the person. Rarely works, by the way. Or, I know this is wrong, but one time's not going to hurt. Surely God will forgive me if I just do it this once. You see, we rationalize things, even as Christians we struggle with this, if we're not in the Word of God because we're going off of our feelings and emotions and our own concept of what is right and wrong, our own concept of what is godly discernment rather than God. If we regularly examine the Word of God, though, we will know what God says. And the Bereans examined it daily. They didn't just look to uh, get their own knowledge. They questioned Paul and his teachings. They examined his teachings in the Old Testament. They wanted to make sure what Paul said was accurate because they knew they had to answer for themselves. And that God had something to say. Examination includes a deep look at the text and its contents. It means that we dive into the text, learning what is it, it is really saying. Not only did they examine the text, they did so daily. I think one of the biggest issues with Christianity today, and it's shrinking, is not that Satan's winning. It's not the broken homes we find more and more often. It's not that we're not evangelizing. I, I think that's part of it. But I think the biggest issue and the biggest problem that's causing the shrinking of Christianity is because we are looking so much like the world because we don't regularly examine the Word of God. And so what we think is the will of God is actually closer to what the world wants than what God wants. And so church, I want to encourage you, be a Berean 
read the Word of God regularly. I liked what the video said and what we talked about in class this morning, the idea that it doesn't have to be a five-hour ordeal every morning. Even if you can't pull 30 minutes off, start with five. And then 10, and then 15. You do it long enough, you'll find out you can't put it down. Because when it becomes a habit, it becomes exciting. Let us teach ourselves, our children, our young Christians, our mature Christians, and those who desire to know more about God, let us teach them to be in the Word of God regularly. To be in it regularly. To search it out eagerly. And then finally to act on it, which is believe His Word. You see, they didn't just get all excited to listen. They didn't just search out and examine it daily. They also believed. In other words, when they found truth, they did something with that truth. In, in the Scripture, belief is not something that's just head knowledge. I heard this great example on the radio the other day. I don't remember who was preaching, but I heard the great example. He said, if, if a demon were to walk into church and look like the average person and walk into this church, he made this comment I thought it was spot on. He said, if you don't ask the right questions, you wouldn't know it was a demon. Because if you say, well, you know, hey, do you believe in God? What would they say? Yes, I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes, I believe in Jesus. Do you believe Jesus died and rose from the dead? Absolutely, I believe Jesus died and rose. You see, belief is not more than Head knowledge, it's head knowledge whenever it comes to Satan and the demons, right? They believe, Scripture says. But when it's talking to Christians, belief is doing something with that belief. The difference is the demons and Satan, when they believe, they don't do anything with that belief. They don't allow it to change them. They don't commit themselves to Christ and follow Christ. They don't do anything. They have the head knowledge. As Christians, we are to call to do something. And belief is action. And so whenever it talks about belief, if you go back to Scripture, in verse 12, many of them therefore believed with not a few Greek women of high standing as well as men. You see, we see that they believed and then as you follow through Scripture, those who believed did great things for God. They acted on it. They believed the truth that they learned. It's more than head knowledge. It's doing something with what you have seen, with what you have learned. It's that application, that putting into action the Scripture that you've read. Whenever you understand what it's getting at and what it's saying, it's saying, now how can I apply this to my life? How can I share this with somebody else? We must remember that Scripture offers a chance to do something with it. If we eagerly search and examine the Word of God, we will find ways to apply it into our lives, to put that belief into practice. And as we do so, we will see God give us vast riches beyond what we could ever imagine. Maybe not money, maybe not things, but we will receive blessings from God. In his writing, The Divine Conquest, A.W. Tozer wrote the following. May not the inadequacy of much of our spiritual experience be traced back to our habit of skipping through the corridors of the kingdom of God like children through the marketplace, chattering about everything but pausing to learn the true value of nothing. What he is getting at is we must learn and we must Remember that Scripture offers valuable insight and wisdom and discernment. That we don't just go through the Word and just uh, play it off like a child would just not really pay attention to a lot of things, but that we learn the value of what we have done and the value of what it gives and that we apply it and do something with it. This was understood by Paul and it was certainly understood by the Bereans. We must seek out God's discernment through eagerly receiving His Word, through examining 
his word and through believing his word. You see, church, we are to be people of the word. The word became flesh. The word was spoken from Christ Jesus. The word was with God in the beginning. The word is from the mouth of God. It was spoken by the prophets. It was declared by the apostles. And it's been carried down through the ages by faithful Christians ever since. Do we understand the value of the Word? Are we teaching that to others? Are we putting it into practice? Are we eagerly listening to it? Are we examining it on a regular basis? And are we believing and practicing what we find? This morning, we want to offer an invitation. The Word became flesh. Jesus Christ came down to this earth, not just to preach the Word of God, but to be the fulfillment of the Word of God. As He came down and He died for our sins, as God said, that we would need one to do. And as He rose from the grave so that we too might be given a chance at a new life. Christ did that even when we didn't deserve it. Even when He knew how many times we would turn our back on Him time after time after time. Have we eagerly accepted the teachings of Christ? Have we examined them And do we believe them to the point we want to do something with it? If you are not a Christian, this is your opportunity to accept it, to listen to it, if you will. It's your opportunity if you don't know much. We want to offer you the opportunity to come and to examine it, and we'll help you examine it. But if you would like to accept it and be baptized, this is your opportunity as well. But maybe you're a Christian and maybe you're struggling in one way or another and you would like the support of this congregation and you would like our prayers. We offer that opportunity as well. Whatever your need is, make today the day you're going to do something different. Take that first step today by coming forward, letting us know as we stand and sing this song.